If you want a drive that will go over 9000, and one that doesn't break the bank, Crucial's new P510 might be exactly what you're looking for. This is just rolling out, so if you're watching this video as it goes live, you likely can't get your hands on one just yet, but by mid to late July it should be widely available, and there will be a link to it on Amazon in the description should you fancy picking one up yourself. The P510 isn't exactly what you call a full-fat PCI Gen 5 drive. It's more of a skimmed version, much like the early crop of Gen 4 drives. This is more like an overclocked Gen 4 drive than a true Gen 5 drive, at least in terms of performance, although that's not to diminish just how fast this thing is. It is insane. Physically, the drive is pretty simple. It's a single-sided 2280 drive that comes in just four versions, one or two terabyte capacity, and with or without a heatsink. I've got the 2TB version, sans heatsink, which for me is my preferred choice anyway since most motherboards have hefty heatsinks built in that often do better jobs than the SSD only heatsinks, and trust me when I say there's no issues with temperature of this thing, especially with a motherboard heatsink. It also does make it easier to peel off the sticker and see what's lurking beneath. Somewhat unsurprisingly, it's a pretty simple driver under here. It's a Fizen E31 DRAM-less PCI Gen 5 controller, along with two packages of Micron, that's Crucial's parent company's Gen 9 276 layer 3D TLC NAND flash. Each of those packages are one terabyte each, Assumedly, the drive is able to write to these in parallel too, as Micron's marketing for that G9 NAND claims a peak of 3.6 gigabytes per second, while the box for this P510 claims up to 10 gigabytes per second, at least in reads, although Crucial's other marketing actually claims up to 11 gigabytes per second in reads, so we'll just have to test it out and see what it can actually do. Interestingly, littered across the board here are a bunch of diode-incorporated PI2 SSD chips that let the controller multiplex or DMUX access to more ports than the flash. There's four of these, which isn't something that I've seen before, especially on an SSD like this. I wonder if that is for signal integrity, as we often see on motherboards with like the Fizen PCIe ReDriver chips. Anyway, after sticking the drive into the direct to CPU slot for the best performance connected to a 14600K running at Gen 5, I first tried seeing the straight copy rates from a RAM disk, which should be just about faster than the drive itself, at least on reads from it and writes to the P510 which is kind of wild for an SSD. And while I can only copy just under 20 gigabytes of data from the RAM disk due to only having so much RAM, it copies to the P510 over four gigabytes per second. That's not exactly the 10 to 11 gigabytes per second promised, but damn that's fast. Looking at some synthetic tests, starting with Crystal Disk Mark, you can see that yes, in fact, this is the fastest drive I've tested. Now that is a bit of a hollow victory, being this is the only Gen 5 drive I've had in, but still. I didn't quite get the claimed ratings at 8.6 gigabytes per second in writes and 9.2 gigabytes per second in reads, but that is two gigabytes per second clear of every other drive I've tested, so it's safe to say it's fast. Interestingly, with a Q depth of one, while the P510 retains its leadership position in writes, reads are kinda poor at least for a Gen 5 drive. Two of the Gen 4 drives I've tested, the SK Hynix P41 and Solidine P44 Pro, offer faster read performance, which is quite a surprise. With a random 4 kilobyte block size and a Q depth of 32, we see, well, pretty shocking performance really. Crucial's own P310 is actually faster in reads, and three other Gen 4 drives offer faster both read and write performance, including one with a very significant margin. At least with a Q depth of one, we get more sensible results, save for the P310 still outperforming the P510 in writes. At least the P510 is just the fastest drive I've tested in reads here. As for ASSSD, that always reports lower figures, and as expected, we get lower results here. The P510 is still the fastest drive I've tested, although at least for writes, not as much as you'd hope. 
6.9 gigabytes per second in writes and 8 gigabytes per second in reads. Fastest for sure, but not light years ahead. With a 4 kilobyte block size, at least on writes, the P510 does just edge out the P310, but only by just 7 megabytes per second. Reads aren't as impressive though, with a whole bunch of drives outperforming the P510. With 64 threads, you'll get a bunch more performance at 4.4 gigabytes per second in writes and 3 gigabytes per second in reads, but that isn't the fastest I've seen. Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus and Plus G offer better writes, and the latter are better reads too. But the weirdest result by far was from ATTO Disk Benchmark. I reran this multiple times with the drive in differing conditions, i.e. part full, formatted, restarted to run trim, basically everything that I could think of, but regardless, it gave me this. Obviously, we get excellent overall performance at the top end with larger file size blocks, just nipping 10 gigabytes per second on reads, although it drops to more like 9 gigabytes per second on anything over 8 megabyte blocks and around 9 gigabytes per second more stably in writes. But I can't help but notice a rather significant delay in read performance compared to basically every other drive. Performance starts peaking up at around 8 kilobytes and you know our st and then peaks at 64 but this drive doesn't start rising until 64 kilobytes and peaking at 256. What's even more confusing is that the write performance is basically top of the pack for the entire time, the entire sort of test size. This drive loves writes and hates reading. Interesting. The most confusing thing for me by far though is my file duplication stress test. This shows not only the simultaneous read and write performance, but also lets us see how big the SLC cache is. On this drive, well that's a little complicated. See, bare duplication performance was around 3 gigabytes for the first 70 gigabytes or so, before dropping to around 2 gigabytes per second. 3 gigabytes is a new record, beating the P310's 2.3, 2.4 gigabytes or so, although the confusing thing is this. I kept duplicating files, and it kept running around 1.3 gigabytes per second consistency. Uh, what, what's weirder is that the more I copied, the faster it got. It was back up to 2 gigabytes per second consistently after writing almost the entire drive in one go, I might add. Usually we see a precipitous drop in performance at some point, but this thing just keeps going. I literally ran out of room before the drive could find a noticeable performance drop. And that's impressive. Funnily enough, it seems like the NAND flash's performance here is both the drive's strongest and weakest point. The NAND itself, especially without a DRAM cache, doesn't appear to be able to live up to the PCI Gen 5 interface's bandwidth. But it also seems to have absolutely incredible bare NAND performance. No matter how much you fill this drive up, you're going to have a high-end or empty Gen 4 drive worth of performance, and considering that this thing is just a budget Gen 5 drive, that might actually be a pretty convincing selling point for you. This drive is about £30 more than a good Gen 4 drive though, with the same capacity, and has the potential bottleneck of needing a Gen 5 compatible motherboard to put it in. Think Ryzen 7000 series or newer, or Intel Core Ultra 200 series, unless you run your GPU AX like I did on 13 to 14 Gen to run this test properly. So realistically, you're better off, or you're probably better off getting a good Gen 4 drive, like the P310 to be honest. But if you do want to future-proof just a little bit extra and are willing to part with the cash, this does look like a really impressive drive, especially for the money. Whether or not you're willing to spend an extra 10 or 20 pounds to get a more full-fat Gen 5 drive, well, I'll leave that one up to you. Like I said at the start, this probably isn't available if you're watching this video when it comes out, but if you're watching it a little bit later, there will be a link to Amazon in the description where you can pick one of these up if you're interested or just check out pricing when and where you watch this. You can also check out plenty of other videos on the end cards, hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this one, and check out my own hardware, the open source response time and latency testing tool. Those are linked to the description, that's osrtt.com. 
Otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of the P510 in the comments too. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next one.